Ladies and gentlemen, 10 seconds until we can kick off this week's Session Zero, where we'll be taking on some vampires. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I hope you have all had uh, a lovely, lovely weekend. It is, well, week now. It's Wednesday. It's time for the weekly session of some D&D. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Josh Strife Hayes, and as always, I'm joined by our fantastic players. We have Rage Darling, who's currently sorting out some of her makeup, Callum Upton, and Billy Tricks. Cal, would you like to just say hi and let me let everyone know how you've been? Hello, everybody. I've been great. That's it. That's it. That's the entire introduction. <laughs> I've been great. I've got Good. nothing to tell. Now you all know Callum a little bit better. Yeah. I feel. Cal, why don't you tell us a little bit about the character that you're going to be playing in today's session? Which is, of course, the same character as you always play, but we may have some yeah. new viewers. What's so, his yeah. name again? <laughs> Look, we'll, we'll try not to get into that. So I'm playing a bard. Uh, his name was Donovan, but has been recently legally changed to Callum for ease of use. Yes. And, because uh, no one referred shit. to you as Donovan or Donin. It was always no, just Callum. It's, no, it, it was just Callum. So it's Callum there. Yeah, he's he's a little bit shit, but he's he'll make he'll make do. <laughs> so you're playing Callum the Bard, who is, in your own words, a little bit shit, but yeah. will do. Yeah, I mean that's all you can ask of someone, right? I think he's great. I like him. I think he's really good. I think he's down to earth, and funny and silly. And do you have your flute with you? As always. Callum actually has a flute, and if he plays the flute whenever he makes rolls in D&D, I will give him bonuses to those rolls, because that's just how we roll here. Billy, oh, yeah. how are you this week? I am so good. Fantastic. Would you like to introduce yourself to anyone who might be new or might not know you? Hi, I'm Billy, and I'm going to be playing Trixa Sorceress. That's only been my name ever. And I am really good at accidentally killing people. You are. You are terrific at accidentally killing people. Hopefully that. that won't happen today because today you've been hired. Well, you might need to kill someone. You effect Effectively, all of you have been hired to clear out a nest of vampires. And we're going to see how all that goes. Now, Rage Darling, our resident barbarian, should be with us. But Yo. speak <gasps> of the devil and Boom. he shall appear. Rage, why don't you introduce yourself and let everyone know a little bit about your character? Hello, my name is Rage, or Rage Darling. Um, I play a barbarian, naturally, because my name is Rage, I've got to play a barbarian. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit naive, a little bit stupid, and extremely heavy-handed. Mm. Um, hopefully we won't make any accidents this time round. We'll see. L let's hope so. For anyone new to the format of the show, this is an episodic weekly Dungeons & Dragons adventure that does not necessarily follow on from the week before, so it does not matter if you missed last week's session, and it doesn't matter if you miss next week's session. You are here right now, and that's what matters. Our party of adventurers are all employed by the Adventurers Guild. They are registered adventurers. However, they are only capable of performing all of the requirements of an adventurer if they all work together. So, in order to adventure, they must remain as a party. You have seen, nailed on trees as you have wandered through the wilderness, sometimes up in towns on boards, or found on a flyer, tossed onto a dusty road, a note asking for help. It says, Help. I require... <laughs> I thought that was just going to be it. <laughs> that was it. No, just no, help. there's more. <laughs> okay. Help. I require a band of adventurers to remove a nest of vampires. <laughs> Someone in the chat has just written, help, I require help. <laughs> <laughs> Yet the note says, help, I require help. I require Thank someone you. to remove a nest of vampires from my town. And the I on require is dotted with a little bat. And then it's signed at the bottom, Vladimir V. Pyre. Billy, you look shocked. Have you heard of Vladimir V. Pyre before? I have, and I think what he does is incredible. Mm, he is a talented man, that's true. It's going to be exciting to work out what he does as I try and work that out quickly before you arrive <laughs> at the village. Callum, have you ever met or have you heard of Vladimir V. Pyre? Literally never. It sounds like an awesome villain name, though, so I'm, I'm here for it. Oh, he's the good guy. He might be. And Rage... Have you heard of Vladimir V. Pyre before? I haven't. No. Um, my town is a, is a little quiet 
No one really gets out much, but... Yeah. Well, you have managed to hunt down the village that he lives in, the village of Pyre. It's a, it's a sleepy little hamlet. For some reason, there's always a storm cloud above. The church burnt down many years ago and is simply a big husk of blackened wood, ash, melted glass, smashed bits. There's a merchant shop that hasn't been open in a while. It's a run-down place, but people still live here. Although, as you walk in, you see many people lean out of their windows and then close the wooden shutters. It seems this town doesn't like visitors too much, but you know this job will pay if you can find Vladimir and say that you are willing to help kill some vampires. Rage, you ever dealt with vampires? No, never, but I have heard through the grapevine that they are quite charming. And um, a lot of them have white hair. Mm, yes, so they do. They yeah. do. Uh, Callum, have you had a run-in with vampires before? Uh, I actually went to school with a vampire when I was younger. Um, he kept it hidden pretty well until mm. he started you know, eating one of the teachers. But up until then, he concealed it pretty damn well. He always sat in the shadowy spot of every classroom, didn't he? That should have been the dead giveaway. And uh, he'd never eat with silverware or... Mm. He did disappear when he walked past mirrors as well. Yeah, and that time that a priest visited and just he ran away from him, that was... He was actually ill. He was off He was off school that day, which Convenient. was, uh, again, another very good sign that he could have been a vampire, but uh, I missed all of those. What was his name? Uh, I don't actually recall what his first name was, but his last name was Briarwood. Gotcha. Was it Edward, his first name? Edward Briarwood. It could have been. He was a bit sparkly. It was. And Billy, have you dealt with vampires before? I actually haven't, but I think that's why I'm so excited to finally meet one. You're excited. Well, as you walk through the dead still centre of this barren, strange village, you hear the creak of a door. And you look over to the village hall. Two big black wrought iron gates, nailed haphazardly to a black wooden structure, swing open slowly. A single bat flies out and off into the distance, and you hear a voice from inside. Come in. Rage, what do you do? I go in. Callum? I, I say we just go in. And Billy? Following in behind. You walk inside the building. Inside, big wingback leather chairs. Green aged leather. An upside-down crucifix nailed onto one of the walls. A painting of a bat on one side. And stood down the end, at the end of a long, deep mahogany table. Standing tall, a man in a black robe, completely shawled, arms tucked inside. He looks over and goes, I see. You are the adventurers that answered my call for help yes that was easy <laughs> i mean technically we're one adventurer but yeah you could you could say that tell me do you know who i am i'm assuming your uh whatever his name vladimir pyre vladimir v pyre that's the one yeah and can't I, forget the v it stands for van and of course it i does. require your assistance Will you assist me? He gazes at each of you individually. I would love to assist you. In what exactly? Rage? What's that face? Is that the, the considering face? Yes. You, I... You... I don't trust you. Are you saying that straight to him? Yeah. I require powerful hunters to go into the manor of Drac, which exists outside of the village, and kick out an evil cult of vampires who have invaded it. Do you Thanks have mortgage enough. rights to this mansion? Do I have the mortgage rights to this mansion? Yeah. Vlad nods down to the table. And on the table, you see an assortment of legal paperwork. Taxes, mortgage rights, 
land ownership deals, maps from many years ago, a couple of letters to and from barristers and solicitors, which confirm that Vlad does in fact own the land. However, he does not own the mansion. Well, uh, now look at my two fellow adventurers here and I gesture, okay, go along with it. I turn back at Vamp and I say, <clears throat> ah, that's, that's a little bit more difficult. From my barbarian school, they made sure that we were fairly educated on the legal rights of property values and who owns what. So it might cost you just a little bit more, you know, naturally, to fight the legal battles and everything like that, and the physical ones. I understand that the true monsters are, of course, solicitors. So I will pay more for you to kill the vampires that are in the mansion. And once you have killed them and you are the only people in the mansion, you must invite me in. That is also part of this task. How do you end up in a situation where you own the land, but you don't own what's built on it? Yeah. The complexities <laughs> of this village and its heritage go back many years. Do not... He walks over to a drawer and he opens it and begins to get out folders of paperwork. If you wish to discuss the history of my village and oh, really? see the legal oh, really? documentation and ownership of land and I'll property, take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. It's fine. This. Truly. Fine. I'm no lawyer. I'll just I'll just take your word for it. Billy, how do you feel about this whole situation? You've been asked to go and kill a nest of vampires by a guy who clearly is not a vampire. Well, how would you like the invite to come? Letter, pigeon, verbally? Are you going to meet us there? It is very simple. You go into the mansion of Drac. You kill the vampire who is in the mansion. And then I will walk and knock in the door and you will say, welcome, come in. Oh, that's easy enough. I love a, love a simple one. But you must yeah. have killed the people in the mansion to be able to have the authority to let me in. Yeah, I mean, do uh, it in the uh, right order. Yeah, we can do that. Yes. Have you ever met a vampire before? Because they are very dangerous. Are they? Yes. They have teeth. I have teeth. Are you a vampire? No. They have different teeth. <laughs> I've never met one in combat, but they, they seem like all right, guys. Rage, how are you feeling about this? I just have a question about uh, the legal rights again. Are you asking um, me as a DM or are you asking Vladimir as a character? I'll tell you what, if, I, if I'm going to speak to you in character, I will put on the most obnoxious Welsh accent ever. Let's speak in character then. What do you wish to know about the legal rights of the land around this very small adventure? All right, so what I, what I don't understand, right, is why all of a sudden they managed to create a mansion and kick you out. Were you there in the first place or not? And who are these boys? Do you know what I mean? The boys like, what's are going on? vampires and the mansion ah. belonged to another man long ago and then the other vampires came in and they, they obviously i assume they killed him and now they are in the mansion and now i need to go into the mansion because it's my it, it's on my land and it should be mine but the boys in it have tenants rights so i need you to go and kill them because they're vampires and then invite me in because that's how the law works in this village that's a complicated legal system. All, we should right. maybe just not question it. All we don't come yeah. around here, you know. Yep, Karen. I mean, yeah, that, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. What about you guys? Are you, are you happy? Do we have a spalb? I've, do? I've done happy? stupider stuff, so yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Right. All right, we'll do it. Vlad, happy that you have agreed to go over to the mansion of Drac and kill the vampires that are inside and then invite him in, takes his leave by turning around and walking up a staircase to the second level of this mayoral house. You don't see him take steps, though. He just kind of floats up 
and away. Rage, how are you feeling about being told to go and kill a coven of vampires inside a mansion you've never been in before? Um, a little bit apprehensive. Because I've never killed vampires before. I've never come across vampires before. I was only supposed to just get, you know, a little bit of insight to the world around me. Mm. And now I'm killing vampires, mm. so I'm, I'm a bit scared. Callum, you have a, a yes. legends of how you fight vampires? You're, you're a bard. Tell us a tale of fighting a vampire. So I've never personally fought one, but a lot of my bardic friends have told me that you can... That there's a few ways, right? Mm -hmm. uh, garlic is one of them. Mm -hmm. Holy water is another. Uh, stab them with something silver or a stake. Uh, other than that, I think sunlight's possibly the only other way. I've heard it varies vampire to vampire. It's like, yeah, it's like allergies, really, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Do you have any of these things available to hand? I mean, this isn't very sharp, but I guess it's kind of a steak without a point. So we're going to turn the flute into a steak. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. And Billy, have you have any experience fighting vampires before, or do you have any spells that would work against a vampire? No experience fighting vampires before, and I'm kind of excited to see what they can do. You've probably got about 20 minutes before the sun goes down. It hits night time, and you should probably start working as soon as possible in this mansion. You can walk around the village and pick up some supplies, talk to some local people, or if you feel you're ready right now, you could just head straight to the mansion on the outskirts of the village and see if you can hunt down these vampires. Is there a bakery in town? Yes, there is a bakery in town. Amazing. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> so Good. much garlic bread. <laughs> Do you wish to go over there? Yes, please. Excellent. It cooks flans over an open pyre. Do you wish to walk into the bakery of flan pyre? Yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Callum, I'm really trying here. <laughs> There's not that many bakery vampire puns, mate, but we are getting there. You walk in to the bakery of flan pyre and you see... Thin woman cooking a flan over an open flame. And she turns and looks at you and goes, Hello, dear. Um, two things. I wonder, do you know anything about Vlad? Vlad? Vladimir Van Pyre. I know many things about him. What do you wish to know? Who is he? He is, is he the mayor of this village. He is a good, upstanding human who went to a good human school. Would you say he looks after the village? Absolutely. Well. He is definitely his carer. Why does he float? He went to a very posh human school and they taught them to walk very daintily. And he wears a long robe which can sometimes give the illusion of floating. Well, that seems reasonable. Okay. Totally fair. By the way, don't suppose you do garlic flans, do you? <laughs> yes, we do. She turns behind <laughs> and points to one. Uh, this is two gold coins. This is three gold coins. Slightly bigger one. And this, that's a garlic flan that's shaped like an inverted crucifix. This is four gold coins. Oh, yes. That looks great for share and tear. I'll have one of those. Yes, the Cruciflan. She takes it off the wall and passes you a perfectly baked, soft, fluffy, cross-shaped piece of garlic bread. That smells amazing. Thank you. I'll be back. Don't, don't eat it yet. <laughs> and then she turns around and gets back to baking more flans. Rage, anything you'd like to do to prepare before you head off to this mansion? Um, I'd like to get a matchstick box. Do you have one already, or would you like to buy one from somewhere? Um, I don't think I have one on me. I wouldn't have one on me, so I'd like to go to like the general store if there, there is, is one. There is a general <laughs> store, and you yeah. you walk in. It's no one around. The shelves are mostly bare. There's a very small old man behind the counter. His nose just about reaches up the top, and as he walks in, he looks up at you. Oh, hello there. 
How can I help you? Hello, uh, what's looking in? Uh, I, right, I'm looking for, um... How much is ah. occurring around here? It's a very what? quiet shop. Oh, uh, worried. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh... I'd like a vamp uh, not vampires. I'd like. Oh, we don't like don't do well with those vampires in the edge of the village. Someone should get them out. Yeah. Do you um do you by chance know whether or not fire is effective against them? Ah, fire is effective against most living things. Not a great deal. Vampires of things aren't like being on fire. If I were yeah. a vampire, I <laughs> can I just have a matchstick box? No, that's fine. I won't set you on fire. Don't worry about it. Can I have a matchstick box, please? He reaches into a little cupboard behind the counter and puts a little box on the top. The problem is there's only two matches in it. Don't get many matches around here, so only... Uh, only uh, one bronze coin. Is there anything lower than bronze in this world? Dirt. <laughs> Rock. I'll tell you what. Yeah, here you go. Never mind. I'm not going to bargain for one bronze coin. Here you go. Thank you very much. He takes the bronze coin and puts it into his pocket, and you now have two matches. Do nice. not waste them. Callum. Rage is prepared yeah. by going to a shop and buying two matches. Billy is prepared by buying a crucifix-shaped piece of garlic bread. Flan. The cruciflan. <laughs> Callum, <laughs> what do you wish to prepare with before you go and attack this vampire that lives in the mansion of Drac? Yeah, well, while we're at the general store, I'm going to ask you a question. It, it it may seem like the sort of question you'd ask if you've been set up, you know, as a like a new work colleague. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do you happen to have any wooden nails? Wooden nails. We do. They were experimental. Okay. He points over to a piece of wall that's actually strips of metal nailed in with little wooden pegs. We were seeing what would happen when you reverse the materials. Doesn't work. Not good. Yeah, no, I wouldn't imagine it would. Uh, I actually could trade you some proper nails for, for your wooden ones. Oh, I see. Yeah, that would be fantastic. He takes I'm out a handful of wooden nails from behind the counter. Clearly he had lots left over. Uh, yeah. Some of them are, you can tell, toothpicks. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them you can tell is just a stick. But most of them have been carved into a somewhat nail-like fashion. They're not very big, though. Okay, th that'll be perfect. I can just splinter them to death. Uh, I, I reach over, I give him my bag of actual nails. He takes and, them. Uh, are they made of iron? I, I believe they are, yeah. It kind of hurts him when he picks it up, but he puts them down quite quickly behind the counter and then begins to to rub his hand. Oof! Ooh, good human feelings in your hand whenever you get pain, you know, like that. I have them all the time carrying those around, understandable. Yeah. You are now fully equipped and ready Do I to see go. that? Sorry. Yes, you kind of see him pick up the bag and then it starts to burn him and he puts it down quite quickly. Excuse me, sir. Hello there, yes. Um, your generosity today. Wait. <clears throat> Your generosity today has been, uh, where am I Scottish? <clears throat> Your generosity today hasn't been unnoticed. I wanted to give you a small token of my appreciation. And I pull out a spoon that's carved with really intricate designs. It looks very familiar. And I say, this year is a love spoon. And we spoon or give a spoon to our loved ones. I want you to have this. And this spoon isn't made out of wood. It's made out of iron. And do you pass it to him or do you put it on the counter? I, I reach over to gesture it to, to give it to him for him to exchange. But I hold it in my hand just for a little bit to see what his reaction would be. Oh, it's very, very kind of you. But it says we've just met. It's too soon to spoon. We need to... Once you have come back from killing the vampires, then I will consider this gracious gift. It's never too early to spoon. 
Just take it. <laughs> Look, when someone offers to spoon you, you don't say no. He reaches out his hand and with just the tips of his fingers kind of pinches the handle of the spoon and begins to try and pull away. And you can see him not wince in pain, but he's definitely uncomfortable as he tried to pull pull it away. Let go, please. Oh, sorry. There you go. He throws it under the counter pretty quickly and then just rubs his fingers. Right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Guys. <clears throat> Guys. Billy, are you still staring at the guy behind the counter? Yeah, as we walk out. Let's see. Rage, what's up? Did you guys see that? I did. You gave him a spoon. Well, yeah, but you see his fingertips says all. The I didn't, gave him. I, well, I didn't see the fingertips specifically, but uh, I he did see like the exchange. Yeah, he seemed like he was in pain. This is suspicious. This is. I knew. I knew. I was. I was a little bit suspicious as as soon as a a guy back. What's his name? Vamp Vlad. Vladimir Vampir. Yeah. It's uh it it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Mm. Not a Everyone seems pretty Just happy. It is a bit strange. Do you all mm. feel equipped and ready? Rage, do oh, you yeah. feel ready with your two kind of matches? Callum, do you feel ready with your wooden nails? Bill, oh, very. Are you ready with the cruciflan? Um I'm I was a crucifix shaped garlic <laughs> flan that she bought never gonna get old. from the bakery Flanpire, which I still think is a fantastic pun. I really wish I had a prop. The sun has gone down, and you make your way out the edge, over the outskirts of the village, toward a huge, big mansion. Black wood and iron. A bronze strip running from the very tip top of the top spire all the way down as a lightning rod, which is convenient because every single time you look at this mansion, you hear and you see a flash of lightning and the crack of thunder. It's almost every time you look and you've got impossible architecture. You've got towers jutting off to the side. You've got a big clockwork wheel in the back. It's a strange looking mansion towering over this small village, looming, if you will, in the distance. Rage, how are you feeling upon seeing this ma magnificent, intimidating gothic architecture? Oh, I'm not a fan. Um, usually we just, as barbarians, we live in like mud huts. Yeah. So this is a bit, a bit intimidating. Dino in the chat, I appreciate the description. Towering like a tower. <laughs> Callum. How are you feeling yep. seeing this imposing, magnificent manor? It's a, it's a bit, bit eccentric, isn't it? I mean, Extremely. It's probably housed to like some sort of fashion designer or something. At one point in time, yes, actually, if you go yeah. back through the legal documents on Vlad's desk, it, uh, yes, it at one point was indeed housed right. to a fashion designer. We should have read those. You should have done. There was a lot of history and a lot of law, and you missed out on it. I'll go back into that later. They're gone. Too late. Oh. It's a time-limited area. Billy, oh. how are you feeling about this big mansion? Do you know what? So excited. I love the aesthetic. I have seen similar things on mm. scroll interest. Um, it's Pinterest, but old-fashioned. They're pinned up um, on boards, aren't the they, all around different villages? Yeah, mood boards, basically, mm. for life. Absolutely love this. This is kind of like home because my family... I'm not, but my family is kind of well off, so seeing these kind of buildings is kind of nice. It's like familiar. Yeah, it is nice. You walk down the gravel path toward the front door of this strange, imposing mansion. Looking down, you realise that the gravel path is actually shards of bone, slashed, crushed, and charred black. And when you get to the front door, huge, imposing oak doors, iron banners across them, iron banding around the outside, and... A little brass doorbell. Who's going to be brave enough to press it? Ding dong. Billy, you press the doorbell and you hear deep within the manor the heavy, dull ring of a bell. A thud, another thud, another crash, and then the doors creak and slowly open. Are you going to be brave enough to step inside? I'm just... Kind of slide my head round, you know. I don't want to come in 
Just yeah, I just want to peek around the side. You see the entrance hall. Lush red velvet carpet, gold trimmings down the walls, statues of knights in armour all the way down, framing it. Candelabras on the side. Little side table with a glass of some red liquid in it. Free drinks, guys. Come Hell on yeah. In. Are you going to be brave enough to run in and drink the drink? Just going to walk up to it. And like, Is there like a... Is it just one drink? Is there a set? Single glass, crystal glass, carved with red thick liquid in it. I wait, I wait. There's only one. Rage, what are it's you thinking? It's not welcoming party. <laughs> uh, this whole place is a bit, uh, it's a bit intimidating. It's a bit airy. It's a bit of a breeze that I don't really like. Makes me wonder where it's coming from. Mm. Probably need to really fix their, uh, Double glazing. Uh, I mean, at the minute, you've still got the front doors open to the house. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not there. the smartest barbarian, you know. And uh, yeah, Callum, what are you thinking about this magnificent, imposing hallway? Metal armored it, statues, tables, it, drinks. It would make a perfect hideout for a shadow cabal. I think this is this is impressive. I like it. Again, if you'd have read the paperwork, that was one of the one of the uses. Makes sense, yeah. Are you going to follow Billy into this hallway? Hell yeah. You all walk in, and as you do, the doors slam closed behind you. They can still be opened. It was just an impressive moment to have happen. It was mostly the wind, not a mechanism. Billy, you're still looking at the glass with the red liquid in it. And then you all catch sight of down the end of this corridor, a strangely, almost impossibly long corridor for the size of mansion you saw from outside, in the very, very distance, just the silhouette of a child standing there. You can't tell what colour, skin or hair or clothes, just framed in a thin layer of light. Black background, nothing to see. Simply standing there and looking at you. Rage, what are you thinking? Uh, it's better not be that Timmy Timmy boy. I, I, I ain't messing with him again. He's scary. Oh, the ashen child that we've met before. It may be, oh. it may not be, we don't know yet. Callum, what are you thinking when you see this strange silhouette of a child? Uh, I'm thinking I've got better places to be. I mean, you're being paid to be here and kill whatever vampire is here. That is true, but I didn't sign up for creepy children. That's no if I wanted does. to do that, I'd, I'd work at a daycare. <laughs> uh, Billy, what are you thinking when you see this strange child? Hello. 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 Shouts back. Hello. Could just be your echo. To be no, honest. no, it's the it's, child it's... standing there looking at you. <laughs> Billy, are you going to carry the conversation on? Yeah, as long as it's not myself. Come here. You come here. Take a step forward. It won't hurt you. I open the back door. I open the front door. I open the front door. Okay. <laughs> as soon as you do, the last remnant of sunlight, as the sun sets over the horizon, just about pierces all the way down. And as soon as it touches this child's face, you realise that they're just a kid, just smiling, just waiting for you to come in. Where's your parents? Father's upstairs. You hear from the distance. Would you go fetch him? He's asleep. He's been asleep for a while. Is he okay? He's very sleepy. Guys, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. No, or me. I, I, I don't like... I, I, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to keep... I will stand watch outside. Yep. Okay, so the barbarian is going to run away <laughs> from the tiny child. Perfect. Callum, what are you going to do? I, I want to tell the child to, to go play outside while we go and check on, on his dad. Would you play outside with me? We have a big back garden. You just have to walk forward a few steps. 
Rage, uh, do you want to, being as you're going to be outside, uh, do you want to go play with the child? You have to go through the back of the house by walking down this hallway. Screw it, I'll bite, yeah. You don't have to, it's up to you. I, I feel like we need to now, I'm intrigued. Billy, what are you going to do? If he doesn't, then I would push him. <laughs> go on. You're going to you push him children. down, are you? Yeah, just like a gentle nudge Callum. to start him w walking. You're going to push Callum down the hallway. Yeah. Roll a d20. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> eight. An eight. Callum, you feel like you've been slapped on the back pretty substantially and you stumble forward a few steps. And as you do, you reach out to try and stabilise yourself. There is a huge statue of armour. There is a table. There's a candelabra. Or you can just fall straight onto the plush velvet carpet in front of you. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and grab the arm of the statue and save myself. Roll a d20. Go on. Okay, I am prepared this time with a d20. Let's... 14. 14. You grab the arm of the statue, and as you fall, you hear a click and a plunk, and the arm falls forward, falling and clicking into place like a lever. And then you see the floor in front of you give way and open up to a trap door into the blackness down below. And as soon as it happens, the child turns and runs into the distance. You can't see them anymore. You discover one of the first traps in this strange mansion of Drac. Well done, Callum. Billy, was that what you meant to happen? Exactly what I meant to happen. Oh, well so. done, Callum. Ray, Thank do you. you. Do you feel safer now knowing that Callum has discovered the first one? Nope. 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 <laughs> I will still wait outside. You sure you're going to wait outside? Your pay is simply to clear out the vampires in this manner. You can refuse the job, you can return to Vlad, you can tell him you don't want to take it if you don't want to, or you can push on and in. It's up to you. Callum, do you, do you need the money? Do you want the money? Oh, oh, I need the money. This flute's getting worn out. <laughs> Guys, I, um, I don't know about this one. It's... I just, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Billy, how are you feeling? So, you're suspicious of that guy. You're suspicious of the castle. I mean, okay, fair enough. This place literally has a trap. But, yeah. you know, I, I would trap a place if... We're basically burglars. Like, no wonder there's traps in here. You it's not security. Burglars, We've gone through why the paperwork. You... We've looked at the legitimacy of who owns the land. You've been hired by the mayor. This is an official thing. All you need to do is go and legally murder some people. But we signed up vampires, to be adventurers. So it's fine. So we're basically like... Um... Bailiffs. <laughs> yeah. You're like anti-vampire bailiffs at the moment. Bailiffs. Yes. <laughs> With the AVB, we the, need to go in there. The anti-vampire bailiffs. Callum. Yeah. The only vampire you've seen so far, I mean, you've only seen a single child and you're scared. Are you going to go in or not? Oh, I'm going to go in. I, can I shimmy around the You can. The you can very door. carefully walk around the edge of the trap door. You're skilled enough to do that. That'll definitely happen. I'm doing that then. Billy, are you following them in? Yes, I'm going to shuffle with him. And Rage. Are you staying outside or are you going to find your courage and walk inside with them? With the ABV, AVB. The AVB. Right? The anti vampire. With the AVB. AVB. You leave a gang a sign on one of the walls. <laughs> and as I'm trying to, I'll, I'll follow them. So as a you are attempting to learn the gang sign for the gang you just created for yourself, you walk in and around the trap door. Further down. <laughs> Cal and Billy, you're obviously both leading now because Ray just distracted trying to work out gang signs that she's just invented for herself. Callum, are you going to go first or Billy, are you going to take point and lead first on this one? I'm, I'm happy to continue on first. You you're walk, in front. I pushed you. <laughs> you walk down the corridor and it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. And the strangest thing is when you turn around to look at the front door... It's as close as it always was. You don't feel like you're making any progress into this corridor. Even if you turn around and look at the door and walk backwards so you can see it getting further away, when you turn around and look at where you are and then back again, you're in exactly the same place. You don't seem to be making any headway actually 
walking down this corridor. It's impossibly strangely long. Hmm. The good old Scooby-Doo treadmill floor. It could be a trap. Is that <laughs> what you want be. to look for? I want to look for traps, yeah. Roll a d20. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. You are actually aware, when you look down, that the velvet carpet is moving very slowly, smoothly. And then when you look away, very quickly. You still can't notice it, but you may have just found the answer. The carpet hmm. might be pushing you back. How do you think you could solve this? I think we just cut a big line through the, the carpet in the floor. Billy, how are you feeling? Fireball on the carpet! Roll a d20. Two! Rage, how are those gang signs going? <laughs> 40 minutes this time. A. V. B. Du, 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 meet you at the vampire castle. <laughs> Rage, you have discovered how to craft A V B using your hands. <laughs> the anti vampire bailiffs. B. Rage, could you just roll a D twenty for me, please? <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Through a rather strange set of coincidences, you've also discovered that the AVB symbol sometimes randomly enhances the power of fireball spells. Complete coincidence. No one could have predicted it. It's just a thing that happens in magic sometimes. Hand yeah. symbols have an effect on spells. So while mm -hmm. Callum realised the carpet was moving and cut a line into it and started to lift it up and Billy thought, time for arson, Rage, you were inadvertently increasing the strength of the fireball spell. Billy, uh, what are you attempting to do with this fire? Um, I'm just like trying to build a big old ball and literally just shoot it, not at my feet, but like slightly away from it. So the the, the rug just catches fire. And just, Massive the, hole in just it. the rug, not anything else, just through the floor. Yeah, ju just on the floor, nowhere else. You manage to build up a huge amount of fire, heat in your hands, and blast it straight through the floor in front of you. A beautiful, clean hole. What you've now got is a trapdoor hole behind you, leading somewhere down, and a fireball hole in front of you, leading somewhere down, except this down has fire around the edge of it. What were you trying to achieve? Yes, what what, uh, what were we changing with that spell, Billy? Well, you know, uh, the carpet's not moving anymore in that specific place. That is true. As you walk into the thing, you can actually see the carpet does start to... It tries to... It chugs and then it... You hear the sound of a machine dying. You can now walk down the corridor normally. I'm going to do that then. Billy has saved everyone so far. Good thing you were the fireball. Rage, how are you doing with the gang signs? Have you definitely come up with one? Are you satisfied with it? Yeah, I, I've it's sorted. Sorted, mate. A, A v, v, B. Anti-vampire bailiffs. Fantastic. Yes. You walk down the corridor. Callum, roll a d20 for me, please. Okay. Seven. You hear the twang of a crossbow string in the distance and then right past your face a bolt flies by you look down into the darkness and realize that you've made progress but there are crossbows set up around the side of this hallway and one of them fired at you you can see there are others ready to fire billy what do you do i'm gonna break off one part of the flan and like just see if i can magically lob it Towards the person who is shooting at us. It's not a person. It's just crossbows mounted onto the wall magically. But you've committed to this plan. I'm so, doing it anyway. At the crossbows. Let's go. <laughs> so your plan is to break off a piece of garlic flan <laughs> that you bought from Flampire, the bakery, <laughs> yes. and throw it at a wall-mounted crossbow. Absolutely. What do you... What are you trying to achieve with this movement? 
I'm going to try and clog up the crossbow mechanism. Right. So you want to get the flan lodged in the firing mechanism of the crossbow so its future shots are less accurate or even don't fire at all. That is the ideal situation. Please roll a d20 and we'll see how well that throwing baked goods at a trap will go. That so, is a 17. 17. It flies through the air and lodges itself quite nicely on the bolt track of the crossbow. So as you step forward and this trap crossbow attempts to fire, the string attempts to push a bit of garlic flan <laughs> through the aiming bit and it clogs up. And you've, you've defeated one of them. There are only seven more. <laughs> so, Rage, what's your plan? Oh. You've seen Callum cleverly disarm a crossbow by <clears throat> avoiding the bolt, and Billy clog it up with baked goods. I'm just gonna invoke my rage and just charge straight towards the crossbows. Whatever they are. Roll the Cross D20. Things. You're gonna run straight down the corridor, straight into them. lure all the traps, and just tank the damage. That's a 19. It's a 19. You sprint yeah. forward. You are yelling. And one bolt fires out towards you. Now, describe. Do you think you're just going to take the impact? Or are you going to try oh. and dodge the bolt itself? No, I, I full-on take it. You're straight. just sprinting. Straight yeah. forward. And this crossbow bolt just lodges itself in you. And without even thinking, you just grab it, yank it out and throw it to the side. And another one straight into your arm and you just snap it off and throw it to the floor. A third crossbow bolt almost in your head, but you just about miss it. And by the time you've run forward, it only takes a couple of seconds. Cal and Billy, what you see is Rage running forward. You hear the twang of several crossbow bolts and then Rage turns and faces you. There are seven bolt holes and one bit of garlic flan on her but all the traps have been dealt with rage how do you feel i feel still like enraged because obviously it doesn't yeah. fade that quickly but yeah. i feel i feel like you know when you finally take a deep breath after a stressful situation and you just yep. feel so much more relaxed? You've I feel released confident. all that tension, haven't you, by taking all the yeah. crossbow bolts and the bit of flan? I feel like I'd take on anything. It was so impressive that Callum actually ceased to exist. That's how <laughs> impressive it is. Billy, how do you feel? Callum has just sat down at the side of the corridor and is just having a bit of a breather after seeing this crazy barbarian rage. And now he's come back. Callum, how impressed were you at Rage's charge into the crossbow bolts? I'm just so confused about this whole plan, to be really honest. We've got Billy trying to cream pie a crossbow. <laughs> got Rage charging at the crossbow. I I'm not sure what we're doing here. Nobody said this was a well-prepared team. You've got no. wooden nails. You're going to be able to do something with them in a second. Billy, yeah. you've taken out one of the crossbows with a bit of flan. It's fine. <laughs> Eventually, you get to the end of the corridor, and you realise that's all it is. It's a single, long corridor. And standing at the very end is a small child, shaking, oh, God. crying, scared. He looks up at you and simply goes, please, please no, please no. And as he's saying that, you hear a deep thud, a knocking from the door you came in from. It's Vlad. He wants to be invited in, but you can't invite him in until you own this mansion. And you will only own the mansion when the child is gone. Rage, what are you thinking? Um, I want to know what Vlad wants. You want to turn around and walk back to Vlad? Uh, yeah. You hop over the burning hole that Billy made. You hop over the regular trap door that Callum found. And you, you kind of open the door halfway. And what Vlad sees is you standing there, blood dripping from seven crossbow bolt holes. And a little bit of garlic flan just sliding gently further down, leaving a lovely garlicky trail as it goes. The Vlad is standing there. Hello. Have you dealt with the vampires yet? No. Does it look like... Not yet. You need to give us a couple of minutes, but all right, we don't, we're not miracle workers here. When you have dealt with the vampire that inhabits this mansion, I will ask you to let me in, and you must 
say. Yes, Vlad, come in. You are welcome. Uh, you said vampires plural. Now you're saying vampire singular. Is there only one vampire we're supposed to be dealing with here? There may be many vampires. My vernacular of description with the vampires changes based on what I believe you are facing. That's really important information, though, Vlad. There may be one, there may be many. <laughs> right. Very helpful, thank Ver you. <laughs> very helpful, yes. Um, give us give us five, ten minutes. Uh, wait here, if you want, and we'll pop back out when, when we're re ready. Yeah? I will wait here for ten more minutes, and if you have not killed the vampires in the mansion in that time, I will wait longer. Good, 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 good. And I slowly start closing the door. <laughs> and Vlad just slowly up. leans in further and further as you close it, just to maintain eye contact until it finally shuts. Cool. Callum, what are you thinking while Rage is dealing with Vlad? I, I just want to shoot the child in the face. Roll a d20. <laughs> okay. I don't know where that's gone. 16. Oh. We're just using like a regular nail. I'm getting getting a wooden nail. Just you know, just quickly bodge it in there. Yep. Aim and fire. For anyone new to the stream, Callum is a bard and he has a flute. He has managed to hack that flute into effectively being a nail gun. Uh, we've bought some wooden nails, so you've loaded a singular wooden nail into your nail gun uh -huh. flute. You look toward the child, and then what does the child hear? All he hears is... As it squeals past him. Or at him. Moon of death. As it yeah. is fired straight toward the child. It misses his face, thankfully. But the nail, sharp as it is, straight into his throat. Hell yeah. Swiggity swoop, oh. child, used flute. Into the throat. And the child coughs. He splutters. He tries to breathe, but there's a wooden nail lodged in his throat and he can only choke as tears start to roll down his face. He reaches his hands up, grabs it, and pulls the nail out of his throat to a thin trickle of blood, constant, and then his other hand holds over his throat. He looks at you. Why? Why? Just testing if you're a vampire. Billy, what are you doing while Callum has done this terrible test? Um, I've just seen that. Can, can I can I heal him? Just so you know, there's what? people in the chat right now who clearly have not seen one of these adventures before and did <laughs> not know that was going to happen. A anyone in these adventures is in danger, especially when it's a small, innocent child. Okay, everyone, regular viewers are like, yeah, this was expected. <laughs> yeah, we, we knew he was going to die. We just didn't know when. <laughs> but new, new viewers are like, oh my God. Old viewers just are like, yeah, he's, we even know what the child's name Done was. For. It was never explained to us. But yes, Billy, how do you wish to heal bleeding little Timmy? Well, I'm just going to run run up and see if I can like take... Yeah, can take I run up with you? And just... Try to can I like splash some water on him and like use the water. So you as, want like, to healing? run at this child that Callum has just <laughs> shot a wooden bolt into his neck and splash water on his face to heal him. Use the water as a healing to get in in the nooks and crannies of his neck. Roll yeah, a d twenty. Cool. Three. Oh no! You can fucking describe. Do you have like a, a satchel of water on you? Yeah, like just a little pouch. Okay, so. It's not exactly a healing sprinkle. It's more like an aggressive aquatic slap. <laughs> so what the child knows is he was standing there saying, no, please. And then suddenly a wooden nail fired straight in. And then he just pulled out, yanked it away, looked up and said, why, as you, Billy, just sprint toward him, pour some water onto your hand to get it all nice and moist, and then just slap him across the face as hard as you can, spinning him round. The slap is so hard, the child spins all the way and then simply stares back. 
You've just walkboarded a dying child. I am getting PTSD from the many times that we've murdered children in the past, and I'm not going to let it happen again. So I sprint over to try and help Billy out, see her just slap the child, and I'll just gently push her back, and I'll put my hand over his throat to stop the bleeding. To stop the bleeding. Yes. Roll a d20. No. So after, <laughs> no. After seeing Billy <laughs> slap this kid, you want to walk over and gently put your Please. hand onto his throat to That's heal him. That's how I described it. Well, roll the d20. Let's see how effective this healing is. It might just be better to put him out of his misery, to be honest. You might be Come able on, to you can do it. You can do it. Make powers. us not child murderers for once. Come on. Yeah, we were trained in first aid, so we'll see. An eight. It's not the most gentle of healing, but it's not bad. It's still okay. pretty aggressive, grabbing him by the scruff of the throat and holding him there. But once you've grabbed this kid, what do you want to do? Um, once I've healed him? How are you going to heal him? Oh, I was just going to kind of like... Okay, so I'm going to hold his throat down. And then I'm going to grab some used bandages... That I have stuffed in my pouch. Some used bandages. Well, yeah, I mean, times are tough, man. So I take them <laughs> out and I start to kind of wrap it around, just making sure, like, to keep pressure on it. Keep pressure on it. It's his throat. <laughs> You're wrapping pressurized bandages around okay, I, his throat. Class one first aid doesn't cover this, okay? I'm trying. Okay. Callum has shot a wooden nail into this kid's throat. You've pulled it out and he struggled to breathe. Billy's given him a wet slap. And Rage, you've grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and started to very quickly wrap a bandage around his neck tightly. Kid's Not traumatized. tightly, just enough to... Enough stop to stop the bleeding of his throat. Yep. yep. Kid's traumatised. While all this is happening, you can hear a faint knock at the end of the corridor. Going... <laughs> I swear to God, if it's a funny man. Hello? Can I be invited in yet? Have no! You... Oh, give us minutes. Have you dealt with the vampires? Not yet. Go can you, away. Can you piss off for ten minutes. <laughs> right. Actually, you. Come here. I'm going to take the boy. You're going to pick the boy up. and just bring him over to you. Yeah, the, the child, the coughing, flame. spluttering and scared, does walk over to you. <laughs> Please. Please, please don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. you it's the, have... Ignore the flute man. He wasn't supposed to do that. Come here, <laughs> grab him by the scruff, and I'm taking him over to the front door, and I'm opening the door, and I show him the kid, and I'm like, who the bloody heck is this? So you've dragged a child <laughs> over to the front door, I'm, held him I'm up in the air, opened angry. it, and showed him Vlad. As soon as this kid sees Vlad... He just starts screaming. Just oh absolute yelling. High pitch terror. Fear coursing through his veins. His eyes bulging. He is so scared. Rage, what are you gonna do? Why are you why are you scared? Who is this? Who are you? What He looks at you. That's the man that killed my mum and dad. Oh you mother f <laughs> <laughs> and I want to set the child down and I replace the scruff with Vlad as you do Vlad just kind of steps backwards I step forward he steps back again freeze I freeze him you want to freeze him mm -hmm. you want to freeze this Vlad vampire who is definitely not a vampire just on the word of a child yeah Okay, Callum, what Rage, do you think Rage about you've seen this? You've seen Rage pick up this little Timmy, hold him. Timmy started screaming. Rage has been like, who, who? Who are you? Who is this? Timmy says I, that Vlad's the guy that killed his mum and dad. Where's I Timmy? Have you just put him down by the side, Rage? Yeah, like behind me, you know, like in as a protective mother. Okay, you're back in the corridor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Callum, yeah. you've seen I'm all outside. this go down. Billy, you're heading over now. Callum, what are you thinking about doing this? I, I'm thinking we get a swift end to this and we just throw him down the trapdoor. Vlad or the child? 
definitely Vlad. <laughs> we're to, we've, got, we've got two NPCs we're dealing with here. So you want to attempt to flow, throw Vlad down the trap door. Billy, yeah. what are you thinking? Well, my first initial thought was just to freeze him because he kept walking away from Rage. And I think I want to keep doing that because then Rage can maybe just like pick him up and throw him. So you attempt yeah, to freeze, freeze. freeze Vlad. Stay right there. You ain't going nowhere, mate. Hopefully. Roll a d20. <laughs> I need new dice. That's a two. Aww. That's a two. Describe the freeze. It kind of just starts, as I always mean for it to do, just on his feet and like try to slowly build it up. You see, the thing with your magic is that you aren't fully in control of it yet. And it's not always that it's not enough. It's sometimes that it's too much. And Vlad does indeed start to freeze his feet and then the ground around him, the shards of skulls and bone that make up the gravel driveway to this mansion begin to freeze. You can see the ice slowly creep up the front of the door. You can see the ice begin to creep up Rage's feet, locking your knees in place, Rage, as well. And Timmy, who is sat down cowering, begins to become frozen to the floor. In fact... Billy, you and Cal are now the only two people in the corridor who are not half frozen. Vlad can't move because his legs are encased in ice. Neither can Rage and Timmy is almost fully encased now. The entrance to this corridor, this mansion, is now mostly completely frozen over. And it'll take a couple of minutes for it to unfreeze. Callum, what are you doing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run at him, jump and flute straight through the head. Okay, just so you are aware, there's ice on the floor, so jumping is going to be difficult. Are you sure you still want to do it? I'm going to just do a full forward slide then on the ice. Roll Ooh. two d20s and choose the lowest one. Okay. Because this is dangerous. Okay, that's a nine. <laughs> that's a nine. Fantastic. You run forward. You slide. Are you holding your flute out in front like a spear? Like a joust? I am. I'm, I'm like a jousting thing. Brilliant. Yeah. Running. Billy, Callum's probably not got enough speed to make it all the way to Vlad. In fact, what's going to happen if he just slides is he'll probably just stop next to Rage <laughs> and be like six or seven feet before Vlad. There's still ice on the floor and the doors are open. He could get to him, but he needs a bit of a boost. He's not got the speed to get there. The ideas sound. What could you do, Billy, that would increase the speed? Can I shift the ice that's under him, f like shunt it forwards as he's going just at the last second? You want to like manipulate a disc of ice that he's under? Yeah. yeah. Maybe like Frozone? Yeah, exactly. Roll, roll a d20. <laughs> 15. It works. Ice. Cal, you run forward. You begin to slide. You hold the flute out in front. And as you do, you realise that there are little bits of ice, once you've slid over them, cracking, curling and pushing on the back of your foot, almost like little boosts every few steps. Until you are boosted rage, all you see frozen is Callum just in this jousting pose, just slide past you perfectly. You look <laughs> almost in slow motion, just... ...boot <laughs> out in front. Vlad sees you charging toward him. And Vlad now does the only thing he can do. He leans a little bit to the side. Cal, you can only make one choice. Are you going to lean to the left or the right? I'm going to lean to the left. Vlad sees you. He thinks people always lean to the right. So Vlad very quickly leans to the left. You lean to the left and the flute meets the face. The flute hits just above the top lip. But you are flying so fast with so much pressure and so much speed. Tell me, Cal, do you do a little jab when you hit as well? Yeah, I, I go arm fully extended and just lunge straight into his face. You're aiming for maybe an eye socket, maybe the mouth, yeah. but unfortunately you get in between them, just under the nose, top of the lip, and the end of the flute hits with so much force it bursts the skin open you feel the snap of the two top teeth as they bend back you can almost feel the roots being torn out of the gums as your flute pierces through the top lip into the upper palate of his mouth and then pops through into the back of his head 
as the flute is in there, do you want to give it a quick blow as yep. well? I'm just going to give him a quick clean out. Yep. <laughs> Straight inside his own head. You have slid forward on the ice. You have... Why are you so gory, Josh? <laughs> makes it makes it more interesting. You have stabbed a flute through someone's upper lip, smashing their teeth and gums out the way, and with the flute inside his head, you have then blasted a small wooden nail straight up into his brain. Someone in chat just said, Swiggity Swoot Dentistry Flute. <laughs> Swiggity Swoot <laughs> Dentist Flute. Oh, brilliant. That's your new special oh attack now. It is. I love that. In fact, as you do this, one of Vlad's teeth, who, and I know this will come as a shock to you, is actually a vampire. No. Whoa. No. What? One of his teeth becomes lodged in the end of your flute. Which means if you were to stab someone in the face with this flute again, you would have an extra tiny bit of vampiric damage. Nice. You have now upgraded your flute by slamming it through a vampire's mouth. Vlad goes to fall down. Unfortunately, his legs and knees are still frozen, so all he can kind of do is flop his upper half mm -hmm. and his legs are still stiffly, firmly there. Little Timmy gasps for air as the ice around begins to melt. Looks up. Next to the pool of ice is a pool of blood from the injury still in his throat. And he's having trouble breathing because someone has wrapped a bandage around his neck really tightly. Rage, you were, you're able to struggle free and crack the ice around your legs. <clears throat> How do you feel? Uh, euphoric. We've killed the big bad. Um, and... I want to break free, and I want to check whether or not the vampire is dead. Dead, like if, like obviously, there's no pulse. Yeah, I'll give him a bit, bit of a poke. You walk over to Vlad's body, and as you start to poke it, you realise that it's not there. It's just a black robe. Ooh, Callum, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that we've just killed the person who was going to pay us. Uh, yeah. You've done that a few times now. Yeah, it yeah. seems to be a reoccurring theme, doesn't it? And, yeah. Billy, what are you thinking? I check for bats. <laughs> you lift up the cloak, and inside, many, many dead bats. All right, Timmy... Uh, Callum, can you... Um... Timmy looks up. He's just about alive, freezing, shivering, bleeding, finding it hard to breathe, very traumatised inside. Callum, can you do your heal? Can you do some healing magic on him? Maybe sing him like Humpty Dumpty or something? Yeah. I uh, swiggity swiled, heal the child. <laughs> Roll the d20. <laughs> oh dear. Fifteen. Fifteen. Ooh. Little Timmy begins to stop shivering and stands up. He's feeling better. He's happy. Yay. He's able to take the bandage off his throat. There's a scar, but it's mostly healed. And he smiles at you. Lovely, big grin. Nice, shiny, white, rather spiky teeth. And he simply says, thank you. And then you hear from above a horrific growl. A horrible, nasty, deep, primal, guttural bellow. A creature bigger than you can possibly imagine. And then Timmy smiles and goes, Daddy's awake. And then he runs back down the corridor and gleefully jumps down the trapdoor. Billy, what are you thinking? I want to know what's down the trapdoor. Uh, can I take a bat? You can I want try. A dead bat. But as soon as Timmy runs back in, the doors 
to the mansion itself slam shut. Rage, what are you thinking? Am I inside or outside? You're outside. <laughs> Callum, you're just um, outside the doors as well. I, 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 I'm knocking on that door. Can I open it? Callum, is, are, you, are you happy with this plan as well to knock on the door? Yeah, I, I'm happy to knock on the door, yeah. And Billy, oh, what do you think? Yeah, let's go. You knock on the door? No answer. I open the door. You do. And inside is a brick wall right behind oh, the door. for God's sake. You step back and you look up at the mansion and you realise it's, it's a lot smaller than you remember it being. It's a lot smaller. It's sort of regular mansion size now. You look around... And when you look back, it's smaller still and slightly further away. Even though you were watching it, you realise you look down at your feet and you're standing on the grass and the gravel and you look back up and the mansion's further away again. And every time you blink, slightly further away. Billy, what are you thinking? I don't think I can fireball our way through this one, guys. Mm. Rage, what are you thinking? I... My plan of taking the mansion as payment has failed. Sorry, guys. Was that <sighs> going to be your next legal course of action to just see was... the property? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the dad, I mean, the dad was dead, apparently. So the kid was an orphan. So I was going to make friends and adopt him. But, you know. In order know. to get legal guardianship to then get the property. Yeah, obviously. Not, not for the child. Either. Callum, what was your plan? I think we just keep rapidly blinking so this problem just disappears. <laughs> Do you want to do that? I, I, I think it's worth it, yeah. I'm just going to stare at the floor and rapidly we blink. We have to do it all at the same time, so it disappears yeah. at the same time. Okay. Ready? Yep. One, Keep two, three, blink. <laughs> oh, I was blinking the whole time. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Go. Do it again. Right. Do we need to blink on one or three? Oh. What? Where are we blinking? Whichever one she doesn't start on, I'm guessing. <laughs> Why would we start on three? I don't know! <laughs> Go again! So we really well coordinate our blinking. Okay. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> but by the time... By the time you've worked out that this is a good idea, the mansion is on another continent. It's gone. It's not going to be seen uh... again. Searching the body of the, the bats and the black cape, you do find a small what? bag of gold coins. Payment that was going to be given to you on completion. So you have indeed profited from this day. Yes. You answered a call for help. Remember the pamphlet, the flyer that said, help. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> you met... Vladimir Vampire, a man who was definitely not a vampire. You bought a flan, a garlic flan from the we bakery. We have so much left. Does anyone want any? The bakery of Flanpire. You purchased some wooden nails from the general store, the old man who was allergic to iron. And you've still got two matches for the future. Vladimir wanted you to take care of a nest of vampires inside this mansion. You didn't. You found a child, nearly killed it, didn't. Turns out the kid was a creature and the kid's oh. dad was alive upstairs and now the mansion itself has teleported away into the distance. Vlad, the other vampire leader, lies dead at your hands, having been frozen and then stabbed in the face with a flute. Can I have his cloak? Yes. I wanted his cloak. You can share the cloak. You can have it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Okay, wait. No, I want it on Wednesdays. <laughs> okay, fine. You can have it on Goth Wednesdays. Nice. Thanks. Does Callum also get to use the cloak at some point? I don't want to. It restricts movement too much. 
<laughs> okay, brilliant. And your movement right now is just stabbing with a flute with a little bamboo <laughs> yeah. in the end of it. Exactly. You will continue roving around the land, answering calls for help from people as and when you you discover them. But for now, the vampire menace has not been eradicated. You have been paid, but not necessarily in the way that your employer was hoping you would complete the mission. Rage, you've now fought a vampire. Yeah. How have you found the experience? It was a lot easier than expected, although I am concerned about our routine pattern of not doing as we're told, killing the quest giver, and yet still getting paid? You didn't get paid in the way the quest giver wanted. You effectively just looted them after killing them. Yeah. Which is a legitimate way of getting paid, but may come back to haunt you. Actually. Yeah. 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 Callum, how do you feel after fighting this vampire? I feel great. I've got a vampiric flute. Um, more than I, more than I could have ever asked for. You can't buy this in a general store. <laughs> Not. And uh, I I I trusted my instinct, and I it turns out I was right. We should have shot the child in the face. Yes, I'm going to use that trope a lot now, and you're going to do it all the time, and it's never going to be right again. Billy, how do you feel after fighting a vampire? You froze them. You were instrumental in the vampire's death. Well, I've got somebody in chat saying the defenders of none which is quite a fun name, have actually defended people. So everyone's quite surprised that we've actually, as Ray said, managed to actually do something good, mm -hmm. potentially. What's you, good about you, what we've done? <laughs> you killed a vampire mayor and you let the other one escape and then you looted the body. It's not that you've not done bad, it's that you've not not done good. <laughs> well, I think that's progress from last time. We, actually, that's the best I, outcome of any of our adventures yet. Mm. We get the, the, he, the, the mayor had legal documents and as someone educated in law we take we forge signature and take land yes well we can't take the house anymore because that's buggered off somewhere else so we could build a new one that's true <laughs> yeah base of operations yeah and we can make our own plans you can't. Yeah, that's for where anyone, you go with this. For anyone tuning in next week, the next episode yeah. is just going to be an entire hour of signing legal documents and working out <laughs> land possession laws. <laughs> and Let playing go. Cooking Mama in our new house. Congratulations, kind of, at dealing with the vampire menace in the moving mansion. And well done for getting a more vampiric flute. Rage, you've still got two matches. And Billy, you effectively have a, what someone in the chat said is a vampire cloak of visibility. It's not a cloak of invisibility. It's a very obviously visible cloak. Yeah, but it's really cool, though. And it I look has dope when I'm magical really powers beyond it's a cloak that was once worn by a vampire. That's a pretty cool reward. I, I look cool in it. What can I say? Ladies and gentlemen in the chat, thank you very much for joining us at this episode of Session Zero. If you are new to the stream, this is how it works. Every week is an episodic, strange, random Dungeons & Dragons adventure game with no particular through thread of story. There are characters that you'll see repeat, and our amazing players do play the same characters every week in zany, wacky adventures. Rage, would you just like to say any final words that you as a barbarian now think about vampires has your life experience changed yeah they're not as scary and i feel like i can take way more on also i thought they were way more good looking but it turns out they're just plainly average they are just average people yeah callum how do you feel about vampires now i mean i've got i see them in a different light now uh i went to school with one he was an all right guy um i never had any trouble with him not a fan of them anymore really they're they're a little bit um, a little bit extra. Yes, they are. They are. The mansion did not need to be that complicated. And Billy, no. how do you feel now that you've taken on a vampire? Do you know what? I just really, really have an appreciation for bats. Do you think bats will appear again in this adventure? I'd like them to. They maybe I will be the. Maybe Callum will be the bat. Maybe Rage will be the bat. Maybe the real bats were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, no. thank you very much for joining us in this super silly Dungeons & Dragons adventure where our three brave party members took on a vampire coven and didn't kill a child, which they probably should have Yay. done this session. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been lovely. We will see you all next week. And remember, if any of you are going to, I think, 
Cal Billy Rage, have you had a confirmation email yet? I uh, haven't yes. sent off yet. I forgot to. <gasps> Billy, have you had a confirmation email? I have. Brilliant Rage, you have. If any of you are at the Insomnia Fest, Land Gaming 69. Festival. In, I-69, Insomnia 69. Nice. In Birmingham in, I believe it's oh, yeah. August, is that correct? Yeah, bank holiday weekend, August 25th to the 27th. We will all be there and we would love to meet you and say hi to you. So come and grab us if you see us. Thank you very much for joining us. Ladies and gents, you have a great night and we'll see you next week. Take care.